Hungarian folk tales. The magic mill. Once upon a time, there lived a poor old man who had more children than there are holes in a sieve. His oxen were so small that they were barely any bigger than grasshoppers. The poor man and his wife spent all their days and nights worrying about how they would feed their very large family. One day, the poor man hitched his tiny two oxen to his tiny cart and went into the forest. The poor man was busy collecting dry branches and stacking them neatly on the back of his cart when he caught sight of a boy and a girl playing in a clearing close by. And the children began to talk to him. The poor man soon learned that the girl was the daughter of the King of the Sunrise and the boy the son of the King of the Sunset. As the three of them chatted away, the boy noticed the two tiny oxen. The little prince was so besotted with these miniature beasts that he begged the poor man to sell them to him. The young prince appealed and pleaded and promised the poor man that his father, the king, would reward him richly, and so the poor man eventually agreed. When the poor man arrived home without the oxen, there was an almighty argument, and his wife was so angry with her husband that he turned on his heels and left the house for the court of the king of the sunset. The poor man arrived to see the prince playing with the two tiny oxen. Come, kind sir, come, said the prince, and let me give you some advice. No matter what my father offers you, you should refuse it and insist that he gives you the magic mill in payment. So the poor man went to the king, who said, Your two tiny oxen give my son such great joy and pleasure that you may have whatever you ask. Then the poor man noticed that the magic mill was on the table and it was so very small that it looked like a child's toy. So the poor man said, Your Majesty, the only thing I wish to have in return for my two tiny oxen is this tiny mill on your table. The king said, Sir, you may have whatever you wish for, but not that. Now then, thought the poor man, this tiny mill isn't a toy after all, as the king does not want to part with it. The poor man humbly added, Your Majesty, Please let me have this tiny mill so that my children may also have a toy to play with. The king loved his own child very dearly, so he agreed to give the poor man the mill. Then the prince said, Kind sir, you should leave for your home now and when you arrive back, place the mill on the table and say, Magic mill, give me gold and food to eat. And when the mill has made enough, you simply say, Magic mill, stop your magic now. The poor man was delighted with his prize. He then thanked the prince for his kindness, put the tiny mill under his arm, and hurried home so quickly that his feet never touched the ground. He was on his way home when he saw something large and black looming towards him, but he could not for the life of him guess what it was. And what do you think it was? It was a horrible, huge, black hat. Underneath the hat was a man, and the poor man joked with him and said, Good day, good friend. Isn't that hat too tight for you? The hatted man replied, Instead of mocking me, sir, why don't you give me a bit of bread because I haven't eaten for three days straight? The poor man said, But I don't have any food with me either. But then he remembered the magic mill and said, Magic mill, give me good food to eat. The poor man had barely finished speaking when so much food appeared that there was enough to feed a village for a week. Magic Mill, stop your magic now! Then the two men ate and talked a while until the hatted man said, Good sir, your mill is a magical thing indeed, but my black hat also has spectacular powers. Ask for one of anything and it will give you two instead. I will trade my hat for your mill. Sir, I'm not a fool. That's what you think. Just watch this, said the man in the hat. Fire! Enough! Yes, said the poor man. I see your hat is quite splendid. But a hat such as that would not save me from starvation. 
the hatted man appealed and pleaded with the poor man until he eventually agreed to the exchange. When the hatted man walked away, he also left a stick lying on the ground. The poor man was left feeling cheated and sad when the stick suddenly spoke up and said, Why so sad, master? I'm sad because I have lost the little sense I was born with, and I'm sad because I have lost my magic mill that I was foolish enough to swap for a hat. Then, in an instant, the stick hurried away and reappeared with the magic mill. And so the poor man had no reason to feel sad a moment longer. When the poor man returned home, his family surrounded him and rejoiced when they learned that the mill had magic powers. Days and months passed and one day the poor man was standing at his gate when he saw the king approaching on foot with his wife and son. The poor man asked the king, Where to, your majesty? Where are you walking on foot? The king replied, We're in very great trouble. The king of the north has invaded my kingdom and I have been forced to flee my home with my beloved family. But don't be sad over such a little matter, your majesty. I will mend matters in no time at all. Then the poor man put the huge hat on his head, took the stick in his hand and set off to find the king of the north's soldiers. It was not long before he stumbled across them because the king of the sunset's kingdom was crowded from border to border by the soldiers. Then the poor man climbed to the top of a hill, pointed his huge black hat in the direction of the enemy and commanded, Hat! Fire! He then sent his stick after the men to beat their behinds to make them run faster still. The carnage was incredible and not a single soldier of the King of the North survived to tell the tale of what had happened that day. Having destroyed the enemy, the poor man turned and made his way home, where he told the king what he had done and that he could return to the Sunset Kingdom. Then the king purchased the hat and the stick from the poor man and made his way back to his royal home. So now the Sunset Prince married the Sunrise Princess. They had a wonderful wedding and the poor man led the dancing and if his legs can stand it, he is still dancing to this very day. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a mother goat. And the mother goat had seven young kids. One day the mother goat said, Now be careful, children, because I'm going to the meadow to bring you fresh grass to eat. Don't worry, we'll be good, the little kids said. So the old mother goat set off for the meadow and then she shouted back, and don't let any strangers in, because I won't be back until evening. The wily wolf had been listening outside all this time. Well, he thought, I have my chance at long last. Hardly an hour had passed before the wily wolf went to the window and called into the kids. Darling children, open the door because I have brought fresh grass for you to eat. The little kids laughed when they heard his gruff voice, but our mother will only be back in the evening and her voice is much sweeter than yours. The wolf was furious and ran away until he came to a field full of turnips. 
there he pulled up a turnip from the ground and ate it to make his mouth dry and his voice sweet. Then he hurried back to the house and called to the kids, Darling children, open the door because I have brought you fresh grass to eat. And the little kids were about to open the door when the eldest looked out of the window and saw the wily wolf's bony black hand and shouted, Don't open the door because our mother has white hands, not black. The wolf was furious for a second time. Then he thought for a moment and ran until he came to the village bakery. When he arrived, he asked the baker for a sack of flour to make his hands white, but the baker was busy kneading bread and asked him to wait. But the wily wolf was very impatient and could not wait a moment longer. I'll be dining on goat meat tonight, and he hurried back to the house. By the time he arrived back, it was late in the day, and he put his hand up onto the windowsill. With his white hand and his sweet voice, the kids were convinced that their mother had returned from the meadow at last. Then the wolf shouted into the kids, Darling children, open the door because I have brought you fresh grass to eat. And the silly kids jumped for joy because they had fresh grass at last. One kid hid under the bench, the second in the corn bin, the third in the ash bucket, the fourth in the wash basin. The three other kids stood petrified in the middle of the room. They were all so terrified that they would happily have hidden in a matchbox, but there was none in the house because their father did not smoke a pipe. Then the wily wolf pulled the kid out from under the bench, the kid out of the corn bin, the kid out of the ash bucket, but the clock door was so small that his long tongue wouldn't fit inside. Oh, how full I am, he said, and stroked his fat belly. Then the wolf went out to the meadow where he lay under the mulberry tree and soon fell fast asleep. As evening fell, the mother goat returned home from the meadow and nearly died of shock when she saw the door wide open and her little house empty. She began to call, Kitty, Kitty, come here. She was sitting and crying when she suddenly heard a tiny voice speak. Don't cry, mother dear, because I am here. Then the last of her kids appeared, who was delighted to see his mother, but even more delighted to see the fresh green grass. And where are your brothers? Then the little kid told his mother how the wily wolf had tricked them. Oh, his mother said, so that is who I saw resting in the meadow when I was walking home. Hurry, child, and fetch me a needle thread and a pair of sharp scissors. And while her son searched, the mother goat took a rest after a very tiring day indeed. They soon arrived at the meadow, where they saw that the wolf was still sleeping. Gather rocks, quickly, quickly! Then the mother goat slit the wily wolf's belly open and the other six kids leapt out. Now let's teach the wily wolf a lesson, the mother goat said, and fetch as many rocks as you can while he is still asleep. They soon collected a big pile of rocks and packed them into the wily wolf's belly before their old mother stitched it back up again. Then she told her kids to hurry back home because the wolf would surely be in a terrible mood when he awoke. So the seven kids all ran back to the house and watched from the window to see the wolf awake. When the wily wolf awoke, he was very thirsty and he thought to himself, I shall go down to the stream and take a drink because the six kids in my belly must be really thirsty. The wily wolf struggled to his feet and he smiled to himself when he heard the rocks rumbling in his belly. When he got to the stream, he leant down to take a good drink, but the rocks in his belly were so heavy that he fell headfirst into the water and was washed clean away. The wolf floated on the water and the stream passed right before the kids' house and they laughed when they saw the wily wolf wash past. But the wolf could not swim and was drowned in the deep. And if that wily wolf had not drowned, my tail would have never ended.
Hungarian folk tales. The frog, the mouse, and the sausage. A long time ago, far, far away, there lived a little frog. And the frog met a mouse and a sausage. All three began to talk and they decided to become best friends for life. The mouse did all the cleaning, the frog did all the shopping and the sausage cooked all the food. And the three friends live like this for a month and a day. The sausage cooked such delicious food that they were always left licking their lips. And no matter how much they ate, it was never enough because the food was so delicious. When the month was over, the sausage said, we should really take turns, so who is going to cook the food instead of me? Why not the frog, they said. So then they made the frog their cook. The frog tried this kind of dish and that kind of dish and that kind of dish and this kind of dish but he could never cook anything the others liked to eat. He carried on cooking for a couple of days, but then they asked him to stop. You are a very bad cook, frog, they told him. The frog felt very ashamed. Well then, croak, who will do the cooking now? So the sausage said, we'll make it the mouse's job. So the mouse became the cook. And it cooked for a couple of days, but it cooked so badly that it asked the sausage, why don't you cook instead of us? Yes, croak, why don't you cook instead? The frog asked. But the sausage could only say, I had my turn of cooking, and if you don't want to cook, then we'll have to break this friendship up. but they begged and begged the sausage until it finally agreed to cook for a couple of days more. The frog thought it could learn to cook by watching the sausage. Well, when the soup was nearly done, the sausage pulled it aside. And when it thought nobody was looking, it jumped into the soup. Aha! Croak! Now I know why the soup tastes so good. Because the sausage always jumps into it first. Now I know how to cook. Then the frog offered to cook for them again. Now I will be the cook, Croak. I know how to cook. So the frog put a big pot of water on the stove and made a big fire to get it good and hot. And it cooked it and cooked it. When it thought that the contents of the pot had cooked enough, the frog didn't wait for it to cool, but hopped right into the boiling hot soup. Well, 
The water was so terribly hot that it made the poor frog's skin all slimy and wrinkled. And that is where toads come from. Then the frog had to stop cooking because the hot soup had scalded it so. The mouse and the sausage laughed at the foolish frog when it told them the story and they decided not to be friends any longer. So they all went their separate ways and they all lived happily ever after. Thank you.